I bought the cheapest Valve Steam Deck on the internet to see if it is possible to get a budget handheld gaming console. Surprisingly, you can pick up the original Valve Steam Deck for pretty cheap on various used marketplaces. But there are a few issues with these consoles that luckily we can fix. And I want to test and see if the original Steam Deck is actually still worth it and can perform and play games to a good enough standard. So this is the Steam Deck that we have picked up off of the internet. I think it cost me around 250 pounds. I had some shipping costs as well. But when you consider how expensive the Steam Deck was when it came out many years ago, that's not too bad to get into portable gaming and actually play AAA PC games on here. Now there are some downsides to this cheaper model that we've got. It is the 64 gigs only. So we're gonna to have to do some potential upgrades in the storage department on this thing to try and load in more games onto it so we can play them on the go. It does have the the uh, micro SD card expansion port down here, but obviously that's a little bit slow, so we want something a bit better than that. But the overall condition of this is pretty immaculate, I would say. There's no bad marks or anything on the screen. The front of the console looks in great condition. The only marks are at the back, There's just a couple of scratches that aren't too deep on the plastic at the rear, but you ain't going to see that anyways. And I think you can purchase some cases for this to cover that up if you wanted to. But one of my biggest surprises was the fact that this also came with the official carrying case and also power supply. I was expected to come with a power supply, but not the official Valve Steam Deck case. So that's awesome as well. So we've got all of the accessories and the console for 250 pounds, which is very affordable especially when you consider the cost of other handheld devices in this marketplace now, you know, you easily can spend five, 600 plus pounds on portable gaming consoles. So this is a great entry point. And I'm very excited to see how it compares to the likes of the Asus ROG Ally, the MSI Claw, and even the newer Steam Deck with the OLED. And of course, we'll see what we can do to make this thing be a little bit more competitive in the performance department. But first, let's get this thing set up, up and running and see what games we can install on that 64 gig storage. I forgot how easy it was to set up a Steam Deck. This thing is super fast to get you straight out the box. The matter of just connecting to the Wi-Fi and then just scanning the QR code and it logs straight into your Steam account. Now, once you've actually got this set up and the operating system's updated and everything, the available storage space is only around 41 gigabytes, 42 gigabytes of actual usable space after that OS, which isn't really much for many games at all, especially if they're of a decent size. Like even something like Euro Truck Simulator 2, that needs 25.3 gigabytes. So you could have like maybe a game and a half, two games at a push on the internal storage on this thing. And of course there is the micro SD card for like an extra additional storage that you can plug in, but that's super slow in comparison to having an NVMe SSD drive. So one of the very first upgrades that we're going to do is the internal storage to take this thing up to two terabytes. And to achieve this, we're going to use the brand new Crucial P310 223 this is an NVMe SSD drive, a Gen 4 one that's insanely quick and also it's specifically designed for handheld consoles. It's compatible with the MSI Claw, the Steam Deck and also the Asus ROG Ally. It does also work on various different Windows laptops too. But what makes this so ideal for portable gaming consoles is the fact it has integrated power loss immunity, adaptive thermal protection and also NVMe low power modes. It has a few other unique features, particularly for battery operated devices. But we'll talk about that in a moment. But let's first take a look at how we actually install install this thing. So the steps to install the new SSD within the Steam Deck are fairly straightforward, but you do want to follow them exact so you don't make any errors. First, we need to shut down the Steam Deck so it's completely off and we don't accidentally corrupt things or damage anything while we're inside of the console. To do this, we want to hold down the power and volume up button at the exact same time until you hear a beep. This is then going to boot up the BIOS where you can then choose Setup Utility within the menu and scroll all the way down to the left and select Power and then Battery Storage Mode. This will power off the device completely and the only way to turn it back on again will be with a connected power supply cable. Now we can safely remove the backplate of our Steam Deck without it accidentally turning on. You just want to remove these eight screws at the rear. And before you try to detach the back plate, double check that there are no SD cards within this port because you will accidentally snap it if you do try and pull the back plate away. Now, depending on whether or not your Steam Deck has been opened before, either by you or its past owner, you may potentially need a pry tool just to have a bit of leverage to click out the back plate much easier. Once successfully removed, we can now get on to the good stuff. We're going to have to remove the metal shield which is on top of the SSD. We're going to use some tweezers here to safely peel back this foil to reveal one of the screws and then there are two other screws at the bottom left 
and also bottom right. These are very small and delicate screws, so don't be too rough with them, as it's very easy to thread the top of the heads of these screws because they are so small. So be very careful and make sure your screwdriver is the right size and isn't too big to avoid any unnecessary damage here. Once the shield is then free, we can go ahead and disconnect the battery just to ensure that it is 100% off before we can then proceed to removing the SSD drive. As you will notice, the size of our new SSD drive and the old one in terms of their physical dimensions are identical. So we're not going to have any compatibility issues here, which just helps makes this process much, much easier. However, before we install our new Crucial P310 SSD, we want to remove this foil cover off of the old SSD drive and put it onto the new one. This is going to help with the thermals of the storage so it doesn't overheat and obviously become corrupt. Once you've done this, we can now insert the new SSD drive and just reverse all of the steps that we just took to take the Steam Deck apart in order to rebuild our Steam Deck. Before you do rebuild your Steam Deck, make sure you do not forget to reconnect that battery power cable as it'll be incredibly frustrating to have reconstructed and put the back plate and everything back on and then realize that the console just simply isn't powering up anymore. Cool, so that's the SSD successfully installed into the Steam Deck. We now have a two terabyte SSD inside of here and it was very easy to do this. There's a few final steps that we need to complete in order for our Steam Deck to work again. And that obviously involves installing the operating system on the new SSD drive. This old drive here obviously has the um, OS for the Steam Deck on there. This currently is completely blank. So if we were to boot this up, obviously not too much is going to happen. Now, in order to do this, we're actually going to need to hop onto a computer and install the Steam Deck recovery software onto a USB stick. Now you can use any USB stick for this, a type A or a type C, as long as you have an adapter to convert it to a type C connection port so we can plug it into here. That should be perfectly fine uh, in order to do it. So we'll go ahead and go through those steps now on the computer, install it and then get this thing turned back on. Now we need to repair our recovery drive in order to reinstall the OS onto our Steam Deck. Now this can be found on the official Steam website where you can download something called a recovery image. If you are on Windows, you will need some additional software called Rufus that is free in order to write this image onto a USB thumb drive. So go ahead and install Rufus. Once Rufus has been successfully installed, you can now connect your USB stick to the PC and open up the Rufus utility. From the device menu, make sure you select the thumb drive as the right location. And then from the boot selection dropdown, choose the Steam Deck recovery image. Once all of this is in place, you can now press start to initiate the command, which will take around five to 10 minutes. Once completed, eject the USB stick and then go ahead and plug it into your Steam Deck. This is where you may require an adapter like this that you can pick up on Amazon if you haven't got a Type-C connector on your USB stick. To reboot into the recovery image, this time we are going to press the volume down button and the power button simultaneously until you hear a beep. The boot menu will present itself and you will have the option to select the USB stick as the boot option. The Steam Deck will boot via the USB drive, which may take just a little bit of time. Just be patient and wait for it to do its thing. In the next menu, select the option that says re-image Steam Deck and it will take you to a screen that looks like this. Select proceed and let it complete its tasks. Again, this may take a little bit of time, so just leave the Steam Deck to do its thing. And then finally, you'll have the option to select Proceed again after it is completed. And then you can now do the final setup on your Steam Deck as if it is a brand new device straight out of the box and sign into your account just like normal. So that was a fairly straightforward process, upgrading the internal storage. It was nowhere near as difficult as I first assumed. You can see here, we've got a 1.8 terabyte of free space of which we've used around 200, 300 gigs of that so far and got 1.5 terabytes free. You can see just from some of these games at the top of the list here that they exceed all of the um, available space that we would have had with the original SSD drive. This thing was 64 gigs. It was giving us about 45 gigabytes installable space. So that's pretty awesome right here. I've also been a little bit more uh, playful with the games I've installed. We've got Lego Star Wars on here, a little tiny five gigabyte game. Because we have so much space on this Steam Deck, I feel a degree of freedom with the amount of games that I could just throw onto this, even if I'm not gonna play it. You know what I mean? If I just throw it on them, potentially with a tiny chance, wanna play it if I'm out and about on the go, maybe on an aeroplane or something. Now, that's something that I felt with the original Steam Deck when I reviewed it. Even though I owned the 512 gigabyte version of that uh, Steam Deck, I was still very cautious when it came to installing games, not trying to install too many and being very particular and specific with the ones that I was actually going to put onto the deck itself. 
Now we'll go ahead and run some game tests on this thing, but before we do, there are some other upgrades that we could apply to this Steam Deck to sort of take it to the next level. As you can see on the desk, I've still got all of the screws lying around because I haven't secured the back plate just yet because at the start of the video, I did mention this back plate was all scratched as we did purchase it used. So, you know, depending on the condition of the used Steam Deck that you pick up, varying degrees of obviously quality of the product. But I went on Amazon and I found a few extra upgrades that are super duper cheap they just sort of allow you to take your, your used Steam Deck to the next level. So first, let's take a look at probably one of the more advanced upgrades that you can do, which is basically switching out the entire casing of the Steam Deck to whatever color you like. So this is obviously a little weird orange color one. I got like a really obscene one, so it was obvious uh, what, what we were doing here. Uh, so this is a complete kit that lets you change out the back plates and the front cover of the Steam Deck that again just lets you personalize it to that next level. One of the great advantages of us picking this up so cheap used is we can freely upgrade it with much less stress. We can upgrade the storage, we can even upgrade the encasement if we wanted to, if it was in really bad condition because you could potentially get a Steam Deck even cheaper than what I got here. I purchased this one in a fairly decent condition but you could definitely get one way cheaper if it did have damages to obviously the exterior but the interiors were perfectly fine. This is an example for around 30 pounds how you could then upgrade this because if you're going to be taking it apart to upgrade the storage it's only a few more screws to then obviously switch out everything else so we could throw this back plate on the rear here and take off the original one and then that would obviously replace um, all of the scratches and the marked ones that's on here and also show some of the motherboard off in quite a cool fashion now if that's a step too far for you because you do obviously have to remove some screws on the top half here there are some grip cases and also stickers so this is just a simple grip case that enhances your experience with the Steam Deck, makes it a little bit more comfortable to use in terms of the ergonomics of it. But again, it covers up all of these scratches and marks that you may potentially have on a used unit that you're picking up on the internet and that just clicks straight into place and it looks like a brand new Steam Deck without any issues whatsoever. It took less than five seconds, that right there. It just makes it feel a little bit more comfortable and protects some of the buttons just a little bit better. So I've now successfully booted into a game on the new SSD drive, just playing Lego uh, Complete Saga, the original one from back when I was a kid. I literally feel like I'm playing on my DSi again, like, but with premium graphics on the Steam Deck. This, this performance is pretty good. Now this is an example of multiple ways how you can use the Steam Deck and also the flexibility we get of having that additional storage storage space. So if we were to be uh, playing AAA games, obviously we can do that on the Steam Deck, 100 plus gigabyte games, whatever you want if it, on the Steam Deck, we can play that. But also it highlights how great it is for just playing little tiny games that are four and a half gigabytes like this one here. The great thing about smaller games like this too is they're much less intense in terms of their graphics requirements. So you can play them uh, very smoothly on the Steam Deck and also get very good battery life from it as well. So you can have quite an undisrupted experience and also the system itself like it's silent right now. There's not a single bit of fan noise when you play something like Spider-Man, Cyberpunk, this thing. It gets a little bit louder. So it's awesome that we now have that flexibility to play a larger range of games, whether that be huge ones or tiny ones, not just little tiny indie games or older games like this because of the restriction of that older SSD drive space. The overall performance of the Valve Steam Deck all these years later since its original release, I still think is, is very impressive. Considering I've tried out so many different portable handheld consoles that are more powerful over the last couple of years, I thought I would notice a considerable difference in the performance department. But to be fully transparent, I actually found it to be better than the last time I tried it. I think games seem to be a little bit more optimized and the developers have sort of figured out the sweet spots for some of the settings. Anything from the easier games like Lego Star Wars all the way up to the Last of Us part one all seem to play flawlessly on the current steam deck and the assistance of the new upgraded storage definitely helped this device feel way more current i've never had a portable gaming console with two terabytes of internal storage before the maximum was uh, around one terabyte inside of my msi claw and having this amount of storage has made a huge difference just for the variety of games you can access so quickly which is key when you are on the go you want to be able to play lots of stuff whenever you like because you're most likely going to be bored and traveling or waiting for an airplane or something and you're not going to have access to very quick internet to install anything else. You can learn more about the brand new Crucial P310 link down below in the video description. This thing is compatible with the Valve Steam Deck, the Asus ROG Ally, and also the MSI Claw. I did switch it out inside of my MSI Claw as well to boost that thing up to two terabytes. The Crucial P310 is also available in a one terabyte variation for around £139, which is fairly reasonable considering its performance levels and the things it can do for these much older handheld consoles like the 64 gigabyte version of the Steam Deck.
If there's any other mods and upgrades you want to see me make onto this Steam Deck, let me know in the comment section down below. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to check out my full review of the MSI Claw, where I traveled across the world to see how good portable gaming currently is, you should check out this video next.